idea. to make Mrs. Withers mad at me. It's only a matter of what's fair, dear. You have better grades than that little foreign student. It's not foreign, Mommy. Eduardo is Hispanic, and he's a good student, too. Not as good as you are, dear. Do, do you mind? Yes, sir. Thank you. The award is for Outstanding Student of the Year. You have straight A's, perfect attendance. But, Mommy... No buts about it, dear. Is that little Mexican in the talented and gifted group? No. Just a stupid plan. I don't need another. I got one last year. And the year before, and the year before that, and you deserve it again this year. I think... maybe this should be a private conference. Mommy, please, please don't embarrass me. I would never do that. Who's your best friend? You are. Who loves you more than anything on God's green earth? Do you do, Mommy? That's right. Now you run along. I'll meet you on the playground. Yes, Mommy. Jessica Ann! Yes, Mommy? Posture. <sighs> yes, Mommy. Good afternoon, Mrs. Sterling. Um, I hope you don't mind if uh, I continue with the decorating. The Spring Festival means so much to the children. We did have an appointment for a conference. Mrs. Sterling, we had our conference for the quarter just last week. I would like to get these decorations up for the children. So if you don't mind, We'll talk as I work. I don't mind. You're presenting the plaque at the PTA meeting tomorrow evening. That's right. You know that my daughter deserves this award. Your daughter's a wonderful student. So is Eduardo Melendez. Are his grades as good as Jessica Ann's? Actually, Mrs. Sterling, that's none of your business. Neither is how I arrive at who the year's outstanding student is. Really? Really. Eduardo faces obstacles that your daughter does not. You know, when someone like Eduardo excels, it's important that he receive recognition. Because he's a Mexican? You're punishing my daughter because she's white and comes from a good family. Oh, well, now, I, I don't look at it that way. When a person of color, like Eduardo... You're not going to give this award to Jessica Ann, are you? been decided. There's no name on the plaque. It's not too late for you to do the right thing. It is too late. What are you teaching your daughter with behavior like this as an example? Well, what are you teaching her? By taking something that's rightfully hers and giving it to somebody just because he's a person of color. Oh. I have nothing more to say to you, Mrs. Sterling. Good afternoon. 
afternoon. Is something the matter? Yes, there's been a terrible accident. When I went to see Miss Withers, she was lying on the floor. She'd been up a ladder decorating the room for you children. Oh, Mommy. Oh, no. She must have been a very thoughtful teacher. Mommy, can you make it sound like she's dead? Yes, yeah, she's dead, dear. I, I think she may have broken her neck. Well, I stopped by the office and asked the secretary to phone for an ambulance. I think maybe we should wait until help comes. Don't you? Yes, Mommy. Why did they call for an ambulance, I wonder? Mrs. Withers was dead. What good would the doctor do? People die, dear. It's natural. What's so natural about falling off a ladder? Is that a smarty tone? No, Mommy. Because I don't think Mrs. Withers would like you speaking to your mother in a smarty tone. No, Mommy. Anyway, people fall off ladders all the time. All the time. More accidents happen at home, you know, than anywhere else. Well, Mommy, can we go now? No, dear. I'll have to speak to these gentlemen first. March, what are you doing here? This isn't a murder investigation. We'll get to that later. Where's our witness? They asked Mommy questions for a long time. Uh, Lieutenant March seemed grouchy. I don't think he wanted to be there. Well, why don't you answer them? I, I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but Lieutenant March had a loud voice, and it got louder. So you didn't speak to Mrs. Withers at all? How could I? She was lying on the floor with her neck broken. But you had an appointment. Yes, a parent-teacher conference. Were you on time for the conference? I'm never late, Lieutenant. Is there anything else? No. Not right now, anyway. Thank you, Lieutenant. You have my address, my number. Oh, yeah. I got your number. Let's go, dear. Your Aunt Beth is waiting dinner. So, what's your story? Our house on Rockwell Road was really cool. We've lived here for two years, ever since Mommy married Mr. Sterling.
Mr. Sterling was really old, 60, the paper said when he died, but Mommy loved him a lot. He had an insurance agency and was kind of rich, or anyway, he always kind of thought he was. I heard Mommy tell Aunt Beth that Mr. Sterling wasn't as rich as he pretended to be. Plus, a lot of his money and property and stuff went to his kids by those other two witches he married. Oh, only Mommy didn't say witches. Aunt Beth was really cool. We'd been seeing a lot of her since she divorced Uncle Bob and moved to that apartment. Oh, you poor dear, you poor dear. Did she see? No, I discovered the body. Jessica Ann was on the playground. Oh, thank God. Do either of you even feel like eating? Not really. Jessica Ann. Your aunt came all the way over here at the last minute to fix us some supper. Oh, don't worry about that. It smells like spaghetti. That's what it is. I made a big bowl of Italian salad, too. Can I just go in my room, please? No. No, a little unpleasantness is not going to stand in the way of good nutrition. Please, if she doesn't want... Now, you march in there, young lady. Yes, Mommy. Your salad, too. Yes, Mommy. Ever contradict me in front of my daughter again. You know how impressionable young girls can be. But I didn't eat much. All I could think of was Mrs. Withers. And and how nice she was, and how she was dead now. Mind if I come in? Don't feel bad about crying. It's good to get it out of your system. Do you think Mrs. Withers had any children? Probably, maybe even grandchildren. Do you think I should write down a letter? Why, dear? Tell them what a good teacher she was. I think that's a wonderful idea. I'll write it tonight and add their names later. And Beth, do you remember when Mrs. Sterling wanted me to call him Daddy? Well, sure, hon. What about it? I, I told him that I didn't want to call him that. I'm afraid it might have hurt his feelings. And now he's been it. I'm sure he understood. I never explained it. It's just that I still call my real daddy, daddy. And I talk to him at night. I was only six when I drowned in that accident. But I still remember him real good. Sure you do. I was mad at Mommy for marrying Mr. Sterling. That's only natural, dear. But sometimes, I don't think she misses either one of them. Daddy or Mr. Sterling. You know, Jessie, your mother, she's kind of a um, special person. I know. She's very smart and pretty. She has some wonderful qualities. She does everything for me. She does a lot for you, but she doesn't always feel things like maybe she should. What do you mean? It's hard to explain. She was pampered a lot. There were four of us, you know, but she was the first and the favorite. Your grandparents, rest their souls, gave her everything. And why not? She was so pretty, so perfect. She always got her way, didn't she? How did you know that? Because she still does. Jessie, um, I always kind of looked after your mother, protected her. What do you mean, Aunt Beth? It's just, as you grow older, try to understand. Try to forgive her if she seems, well... Cold?
just remember, in her way, she loves you very much. Am I interrupting? No, not at all. Just girl talk. Isn't that sweet? But not as sweet as chocolate cake. Anybody interested? Is Mark here? I, I thought I heard his car. Right downstairs. So, what do you think? Yeah. Mark and chocolate cake. That's a combo few girls could resist. There's my girl. Well, come on. Ah. Are you okay, Angel? Sure. Your mom told me about today. It's awful rough. I'm fine, Mark. Really. Step into my office. Angel. If you need somebody to talk to... Mark, I'm fine. Really. You know, when I was 10, my Boy Scout leader died. He was killed in a car accident. And I didn't have a dad around. He and my mom were divorced. And that scout troop leader kind of became a surrogate father to me. Do you know what that means? Kind of took place of your real dad. That's right. Anyway, when he died, I felt empty. And then I started to feel afraid. Afraid? Mm-hmm. See, for the first time, I started to think about dying. And I had trouble sleeping. And I had nightmares. And for the first time, I realized that uh, nobody lives forever. Mark was so sweet. But I'd known about people dying for a long time. Anyway. If you ever have any trouble like that, I just want you to know I'm here for you. Who's for dessert? I am. I am. <laughs> Mommy met Mark at a country club dance. He had his own business, some kind of mail order thing. Mommy said they moved here to get away from the urban blight where you used to live. Whoa, kill me with kindness. <laughs> I'll, I'll just have the ice cream. Oh, what is wrong with me? You're allergic to chocolate. How about some strawberry compote on that ice cream? Ooh, that does sound good. There's a jar in the fridge. Maybe it wasn't right to listen now to Mrs. Huh? Sterling died. But I hope Mommy would marry Mark. I, I didn't think it would be so hard calling him Daddy. Oh, here. Let me have a crack at that. I'm in Here. Mommy's pretty strong for a girl. Now, there's a sexist remark. I've seen her do that with ketchup bottles, pickle jars, lots of times. Remind me not to cross you. Don't cross me. What's the matter? Little Miss Perfect get called to the principal's office? You mind your own business. There's some policemen waiting to talk to you. What? 
maybe they want to ask you what your mama was doing in Miss Withers' room yesterday. Everybody knows what my mother was doing in Mrs. Withers' room. She found the body. <laughs> maybe I seen your mama go in there and stay for a good long while. Maybe I heard them talking in there. You don't know anything. I see everything that goes on around this place. Nothing gets past these eagle eyes. You're a liar. And my minister says liars go to hell. Don't you go talking to me like that. I'm, I'm like a teacher. You can't talk don't. to me. Don't. Get back to your work. Jessica Ann, move along. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Jessica Ann. You remember me? I'm Lieutenant March. Now, Mrs. Evans has given us permission to use her office. Could we talk for a while? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Why did your mother want to speak to Mrs. Withers yesterday? They had a conference. Oh, yes. The parent-teacher's conference. Yes, sir. No, you don't have to call me sir just again. Candy? Mommy says not to take candy from strangers. Hmm. I don't want us to be strangers. I want us to be friends. Friend or stranger, candy rots your teeth, Mommy says. Maybe, um... Uh, Mommies don't always know best, hmm? Jessica Ann, do you know how your teacher died? Fell off a ladder? Oh, yeah, she fell off a ladder, yes. But Jessica Ann, your teacher died of a broken neck. When she fell off the ladder. Now, we have a man called a medical examiner. And he says that's not the way it happened. Mm -mm. He says it's very likely that a pair of hands did it. Now, there was something missing from Mrs. Withers' desk. Please go. My stomach hurts. It was a plaque for the most outstanding student of the year, which I understand that you won last year. Hmm? Yes, sir. There's that sir again. Now, Mrs. Withers told a lot of her friends that your mother called up complaining that you didn't win it this year. She thought I deserved to win. I'm sure you did. But the mother of the boy who won the plaque, Eduardo? Eduardo, yes. Mrs. Uh, Melendez. I'm sure she'd love to have that plaque. Mean a lot to her. Now, if you found that plaque, would you tell me? Why would I find it? Well, I don't know. Maybe your mother uh, took it off the desk when she was leaving uh, the classroom. Who said she did? Nobody. And anyway, that wouldn't prove anything. Who said anything about proving anything, Jessica Ann? I think if you have any more questions for me, Lieutenant March, you should talk to my mother first. Jessica Ann. Jasper bought a newspaper for 10 cents more than a fourth of a dollar. A card for 5 cents less than half of a dollar. If that policeman had anything else to say, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear anything any of my friends said either, or the substitute teacher. I had a lot of thoughts, too, but I tried not to listen to them either. Remember. How was school today, dear? Okay. Anything special happen? I talked to that policeman. What policeman? Lieutenant March? Hmm? He just asked some questions. About what, dear? Mrs. Withers, you know, nothing special. I just hope he doesn't talk to Miss Jones. Who? That awful janitor. 
She was teasing me, saying terrible things. Oh, like what, dear? That you were in Mrs. Withers' room. A long time talking to her. She's just a stupid woman in a menial job. Ignore her. Oh, how I hate this instant. <sighs> We're out of everything in this house. I think I may make a run to the store and get some fresh ground. Can I come along? Why don't you just stay here and finish your homework, and maybe later we can watch a video. Great. <laughs> I'll swing by Video Factory and pick up, how about oh, Beauty and the Beast again? Excellent. <laughs> You were bothering my daughter today. I wasn't bothering nobody. You got permission to be in here after hours? I'm a taxpayer. I don't need your permission. Well, you just get along about your business. What were you saying to my daughter today? Oh, you mean that I seen you in there in Miss Withers' room yesterday? That I heard you two talking in there? Is that what you told the police? I didn't tell the police nothing. I want you to stay away from my daughter. And the police. Hmm. Maybe I should go see him. Maybe I'd get a big old horse laugh out of a fine lady like you putting up with all that bullshit. You'd make the papers and not the society page this time. I won't have you bothering her or embarrassing me. Maybe you should make it worth my while. I know you didn't do nothing. Fine lady like you. But maybe it'd be worth your while.
Damn fuse. That's those little assholes again. Oh, oh. Better go get those lights fixed.
My mind was full of awful thoughts. Did Mr. Sterling really die of a heart attack? What really happened that afternoon when Mommy and Daddy went boating? Jessica Ann. Oh, I didn't mean to startle you, honey. I'm sorry I took so long. I ran into an old friend at the store. Ready for Chinese and a movie? Right. Evans has something to say to you. People, I'm sorry to have to tell you that there has been another tragedy here at McKinley. Our janitor, Miss Jones, died last night in an unfortunate accident. See, I told you, she got fried. Quiet! It was my fault, wasn't it? I told Mommy about Miss Jones, and now Miss Jones is dead. Mrs. Evans said that she was arranging for counselors to help any of us who might be troubled by what had happened at McKinley lately. If I told the counselors that my mommy maybe killed my daddy and Mr. Sterling for their Ladies, money, your people are beginning to drop like what advice would they have? Oh, Jessica Ann. Do you have anything to tell me? No, sir. I might be wrong. And even if I wasn't, she was my mommy. But then I thought about Daddy and Mr. Sterling. And I thought of somebody else I cared for who might be in danger. We shouldn't be any later than midnight. Mm. Stay out as long as you like. Enjoy yourselves. You are so sweet to do this, Beth. I owe you one. I stopped keeping track a long time ago. Goodbye, Angel. Bye. Jesse, is something wrong? Oh, no, nothing. You do know, don't you, that there's nothing you can't talk to me about. Is it what happened at school last week? Your teacher, that janitor? Oh, can we watch Seinfeld? Mommy doesn't like comedies, but I do. Jessica Ann lately? Not really. I have. For the last week or so, she's been avoiding me. Snubbing me, even. Oh, I never noticed that. You, you don't think she's been kind of moody? Well, maybe she's jealous. <laughs> what does that mean? Um, I think she has a little girl crush on you, mister. Well, What's been added around the Sterling house this last week or so? Oh. 
You've been staying over occasionally, right? Right. Right, right, right. <laughs> Surprised oh. to see me here. This is where all the dicks hang out. March, are you out of your mind talking to me here? Why, Mrs. Sterling can't find us here. <laughs> Unless you two kids have something kinky in mind. Yeah. I go to all these charity balls. What can I tell you? My wife is loaded. Yeah, well, so are you. Look, I don't know any more today than I did yesterday, and you are going to blow my damn cover if you keep this up. This woman has killed two people in two days. We don't know that. Don't we, Mr. Consolidated Life? What? What? The longer you stay on the job, the bigger the paycheck, or is little mommy a good lay? Get your hands off me. Get them off now. Now. Look, I do not work for you. Just stay away. If I get anything. <laughs> I already know you're getting something. But you know what I wonder? If you know the kind of game you're playing and who you're playing it with. There's a little child involved. Huh? You never beat me at night. Has everybody gone crazy on this thing? I swear I'll take a hammer to the beeping thing. No, if you don't contact me at all, if you need to get in touch with me, do it through that cop. Because I'm spending too much time with her now, and you will blow my cover. Did I wake you, Angel? No. Can I come in for a second? 
Okay. What is it, Angel? What's what? What's wrong? Nothing. You've barely spoken to me for days. You know you're number one on my personal chart, don't you? Mm, no. Is it something I said? Is it something I did? Is it because I've been sleeping over? Don't you think I'd make a good daddy? Angel. You wanted to chase him away. You wanted to chase me away? Why on earth would you want to chase me away? Because, because you would make a good daddy. And I don't want you to die. I'm having bad thoughts. What bad thoughts, Angel? That mommy killed Miss Jones. And Mrs. Withers. And maybe even Mr. Sterling. And Daddy. For their money. And do you have money too? How grown up can you be, Jessica Ann? I don't know. Real grown up, I hope, if I have to. Good. Because I want to level with you about something. And it's something that may make you mad at me. Why, Mark? You heard me talking downstairs, didn't you, Jessica Ann, on the phone? See, I haven't been completely honest with you, Jessica Ann, and in fact, I've, I've lied to you. What? My real name is Mark, but it's not Mark Jeffries. I'm what they call an investigator. I work for an insurance company. It's the company that's looking into Mr. Sterling's death. But you and Mommy... That wasn't very nice, but it wasn't part of any plan. It just sort of happened. Do you love her? Well, your mommy's a very beautiful woman and, and charming. Do you love her? No. Jessica Ann, what I did wasn't very nice, but I had to get close to your mommy. You sure did. I had to get the truth, Jessica Ann. I think your mommy is a murderer. But with your help... My help? Actually, your mommy is the one who needs the help. See, if she's doing these things, and we both think she is, then she's a sick person. And she needs to be stopped. And she needs to be helped. Helped? If you could just think back and tell me some of the things you've seen, then we might be able to... Close your eyes, dear. I couldn't remember ever seeing Mommy cry before. She seemed to cry at Daddy's funeral and Mrs. Sterling's, but I'm pretty sure she was faking. Not this time. I hope she wasn't sad because she was thinking of doing something bad to me, too. We have to call the police now, dear. Yes, Mommy. And when they come, we have to stick together. 
you understand, dear? I'm not sure. We have to tell them things that fit together, like a puzzle fits together. Do you understand, dear? Yes, Mommy. Bad things to mommy tonight. Yeah. Bedroom things that I didn't want him to do. You do understand? I think so. And when mommy heard Mark in your bedroom, she was afraid he might be trying to do those same bad things to you. But he didn't. That doesn't matter. And you don't have to say he did either. I'm glad, Mommy. Because I don't want you to lie. And all those things Mark told you about being an investigator for an insurance company, Forget them. He never said those things. Oh. Okay, Mommy. Because if you tell, 